Hello everyone, welcome to a new series of videos here on the CEV. We are starting a series called European Elite, where we look at some of the best players to have graced the great game of volleyball over the last couple of decades. And today, we've got three people who are going to name their team of the decade from 2010 to 2019. As you may be able to see, I've got three great guests alongside me to do it today. Svetlana Ilic, who has been 29 years a player and the last 12 as a coach. She's with us in Zurich. Hello, Svetlana. Hello. Hello, everybody. Beneath her is Gerd van der Broek, long-time coach of the Belgian national team. Gerd, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Hi, everyone. And the man who has all the sunshine in Istanbul, he also has plenty of Champions League titles, Giovanni Gudetti, coach of Vakif Bank and the Turkish national team as well. Hi, Giovanni. Hi, everybody. I'm my friend and I for everybody. Okay, so we've got seven positions to pick. You three are going to pick your team of the decade. And I'm going to go to Svetlana first. Which position do you want to pick, first of all? Uh, let's say... We, we agreed a little bit earlier in, in our conversation. Uh, I would accept the proposal. We start with the setter, if, okay. if my <laughs> colleagues and friends agreed. Such an important uh, position in any team. So Svetlana, who would you like to put forward as the setter in the team of the decade? Yeah, it was for sure not, not that easy to, to choose. In, in one decade are also different generations and then uh, really all, all those players we, we saw in the list are really amazing setters. Uh, it might be that I'm a little bit subjective, but this is my personal opinion and I have many facts to, to prove my opinion. I say the first name, Maja Ognjenovic. Maja Ognjenovic of Serbia. Um, the other people in the, in the shortlist we've got are Naz, Yekaterina Pankova and Joanna Boas as well. Uh, Gert, who would, who would you like to say? I'm satisfied that we'd start with the setter because if you determine the setter, I think this was an unsolvable problem um, because all the players, like sets are set, are very strong players, excellent players. But it, it will become more easy when you make a difficult choice between those four setters because you choose in this way the kind of how you want to play, the style of play. And um, I was doubting. And finally, I took the option of Volos, because it determines how I want to play. I want to play volleyball like, like Barcelona is playing football, tiki-taka, speed, a uh, lot of variation. And I think this setter um, is, 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 requires most those uh, those things. She's won four league titles over the years. What makes her such a good setter? Um, I think um, tactical decision making is very strong for her. Um, she she has a good view on the game. She 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 thinks before everything, so she she can accelerate the game. So uh, she can improve certain type types of attack players and. Um, Choosing for her will make it more easy to choose um, the attack players, I think. Okay. So one vote for Onjenovic, one vote for Voash. Giovanni, can you, can, you, can you decide this position or are you going to pick a third? Keep me always last. Then I, have, I will be always the one that make the, the, the decision at the end. So we have to rotate after. So, okay. I, for me, it's more complicated because two of, two of them I coach. And Nats I coach many, many years and we won a lot together. And Maya, I, that was the first year I played with her because I played many times against her. Like I played many times against uh, Pankova and of course Bolos. So and they are both, both, uh, both good points. The one that, that Gers say and the one that, that, that Betlana say. I I'm, I'm, I'm basically agree. I can say that between this player probably um, Nats would be the best blocker for sure uh, among this player, but uh, I agree about the, 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 the rush between these two setters, Volos and Maya. And I would, I am a little more for Maya because she, I think she proved that she can play quick and she can play high and she can adjust very, very well to, 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 the, to any kind of game. So I, I saw this year with my eyes, you know, so we wanted to play. With the, with the lot of speed, with, with the diagonal and with Ak and Barsh, but, but uh, Gabi need a little 
diff different ball and she was able to do this ball very well you know and the Austin national team you can say that she can adapt very well and when and same when, when she played outside outside Serbia so she won everything in in national team she 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 won pretty much everything in in any club where she played and I can I mean I don't know Volos personally but uh, the leadership also that she has is, is something incredible. So every player is really this year enjoy so much to play for her. And she was really great leader in the court. So my choice will go to Maya Onjenovic. So with that, uh, Gert, are you happy to let them have Maya on this one? Maybe, you know, you let them have this one and then maybe you can have a position later? I have. Uh, I thought that Gilles was my friend and he would support me, but uh, this is not true. <laughs> I can throw away all my preparation. No, no, I agree with this decision because this was, for me, it was the most difficult one. And I agree also with, with, uh, with the arguments that uh, she can play, she can play fast, she can play high, she can adapt her game to the players. So I don't have to throw away my preparation. So I fully agree. Let's put some let's put some height. Let's put some power on the court. We're going to pick our middle blockers next. We've got two to pick from the shortlist of Kristina Kirikela, Eda Erden Dundar, Christian First, Natasha Kuzmanovic, Robin De Croy, Maya Polyak, Milena Rasic, and Stepana Velkovic. Eight amazing players that we've seen over the last ten years. Let's go to Giovanni first this time. You can pick the player that you would like to put forward for the first position of middle blocker. This one is, is also pretty tough because also the, the choice, you know, was, was bigger. I think we have eight names. Again, I feel pretty lucky because every time we, 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 we go to, to the position, I have the luck to, to coach some of them, you know. So in this group, I coach Eda, the national team of Turkey. I coach Christiane Fuss in Vakibank. I coach uh, De Cruyff in Vakibank. And in Holland, I coach Maya Poljak in Vakibank. And I coach. I'm coaching Milena Razic also in Vaki. So, and I have pretty good knowledge about the player, of course, that, that I mentioned. And they're all very, very, very good middle blocker. But, okay, in, in my opinion, middle blocker, uh, I always, you know, I, I joke always with my player. I always say to them, what is your name? Middle blocker. So it's not middle attacker. That means is the most important part of your job is blocking. You know, so that's why... I choose always, I like to choose my middle blocker, first of all, for their ability of blocking. And I like to have, even if now the volleyball, of course, is changing, the diagonal is changing. I like to have always one middle blocker, very good and specialized attacking with one leg and one middle blocker more, more good in front. So about one leg, I, I choose Maya Poliak. She, I mean, for, for me, she was really, she was really something different. She was... Not that the other, I mean, again, they're only great player here, but, you know, Maya was, the, 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 the way she, she was able to change the matches with their block, more than her attack, were something unique, also the way that she was scaring, she was really making scare, you know, the, 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 the opponent attacker. So one block for Maya means, what's always meaning, two, three points for us, because after this block, after come two, three, two, three tip, because no one has the courage to attack again, against her so and very specialized on one leg so I pick uh, Maya first two leg I am little more doubting so that we about the middle blocker in front and uh, I would put uh, I mean I my, my choice would be between Christiane Furst and uh, Milena Razic and uh, I give the vote to, to Milena also I'm coaching her and, and, and we won pretty much everything in Vakibank was there and she won everything in national team too. And she's great, great, great blocker plus also great attacker. So I think Christiane Fuchs was an amazing blocker, probably, probably one of the best blocker in the world in her time, but attack, she was never outstanding. She was good, but was never a great choice. Milena have, have the, the, the possibility to combine both. So I choose these, these two middle blockers, Poliak and Razic. Okay. A Croatian and a Serbian. Svetlana, I'm going to go over to you now. Do you agree with Giovanni's selections or would you like to put forward two different ones? You know, before the, then we start this conversation, I somehow note a little bit about my 
<laughs> my wishes and on my paper stay Maya Boljak and Milena Rašić. <laughs> wow, okay. Man. I mean, I, I'm sure that Giovanni give pretty much about both of them. And I, I would just confirm every word of him, for sure. His experience with both of them, it's, it's much bigger than mine because he was coach, he, he saw them every day. But what, what means my philosophy of the game and how my volleyball is looking in my head, I completely agree with, with his philosophy that middle blockers are people who are most responsible in the transition game about block. So both of them, they are in, in this sequence of the game, amazing. But like, like Giovanni partly said, and, and I will just add, maybe I know them personally both, and uh, they are in, in the same range attackers, like uh, blockers for me. Uh, both are amazing people, both are team players. And I think all this gives me just to support Giovanni's idea. I, I would vote the same for both of them. Svetlana, you say that both are amazing people. When you're a coach of a team, you can sign amazing players, but how important is it that they have a good personality and a good characteristic as well? Because, you know, in so many sports, we often see players that get recruited to sports teams but don't have the right personality. We say in English they're a bad egg. They don't fit in the dressing room. How important is it to do that kind of research as well? Don't understand me wrong. For me, uh, it was always most important thing or first quality, have, they have to be good players. Um, but nevertheless, for me, serious big importance you have also this topic about them characters and personalities. Because I think in the team sport, especially today, where everybody are working hard, everybody are practicing a lot, doing a lot of things to increase them level, this for me, it's part of psychology, psychology and, and this is very important part in the game. Let's go to a position that we often forget about. You know, it's always the last name on the team sheet, shall we say, uh, the Libero. Okay, so for the Libero, we have uh, Shim Gayakos, Monica De Gennaro, Sylvia Popovic and Svetlana Kriklova as well. Who would you like to pick out of that selection? Uh, I, I love to work with Simge. He's, I, even if not a vacuum player, he's a he's executive a player. I read really great time in national team with there, and she's really a player that she's loved from everybody in the team and in the staff. That is a great quality. But my choice will be to Monica Di Gennaro. I think she's doing amazing stuff in, in, the, in the club, in national team. I never coach her, unfortunately. I play many times against her. And I always, I always was admired from her action in the court. It doesn't matter if it was reception, defense, or setting. You know, she's, she's even sometimes maybe exaggerating, even with her courage on setting. Because she's also very, she has a great courage to set quick ball to the middle blocker. She's never afraid about that. But I mean, that means she has a lot of confidence also in setting. So she's a very, very complete libero. So I have no doubt Monica Di Gennaro. Okay, so Giovanni's trying to put one person from his own country in the team to make sure there's some Italian influence in there. Uh, Svetlana, would you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, the the list with the all names we I think we would not make mistake if we say that every one of these libero it's what Giovanni said all in all inclusive but why my choice was to Gennaro it's it's actually a long time we always hear uh, in volleyball that when are about the individual awards, we are speaking about MVP, about best attacker, best middle blocker, uh, whatever. But I, I saw something very special in that girl that as playing one defensive position, let's say like this, she is able to change the, the, the line of the game. She is unique libero in the last 10 years that I saw 
that can be responsible in front of all these attackers and blockers and everything that the, the job can be done by her. I, I'm absolutely fan of her. I mean, fan of her game. It's, it's something what, what in women volleyball in the last few years, we didn't so, let's say like this. I don't know if uh, my colleagues would agree with me, but this is the first libero that I saw playing the ball, especially if we don't forget the, the rule about libero, how they can set overhand behind the three meter line. This is the first woman libero who set the first tempo ball. So it says a lot about her special individuality and, and, and quality. So I just give one example and, and there are many like the, the, the style of her game. She's everywhere really super high quality in a defense, in, in reading of the game, in communication, in uh, taking reception, uh, also taking set over in this situation. So my vote is for her. Okay, so another vote for Monica De Gennaro. And of course, uh, Monica has been playing, you know, top level with Conigliano since 2013. She was playing with Pesaro before that. So this is a team of the decade. You know, most of that decade, she has been playing, you know, for a top team in Italy in a Champions League. Um, is she your vote as well? Or would you like to put someone else forward? We don't have to repeat each other all the time, but... Um... Like Setsa and Gio said, they're all great players, but this was for me the most easy choice. And I think if you ask 100 coaches uh, their opinion, I think more than 90% or even 99% uh, will say Di Gennaro. Uh, you have to know that the Libro can only make mistakes. They cannot make any points. They are the only players who are ending with a zero score at the end or a minus score because if they make one mistake they cannot they cannot do something to, to bring it on zero or to bring it positive so they have to be very resilient um, this is one key element in this decision uh, she enjoys playing on that position i think it's sometimes difficult for young players to motivate them to play on that position if you can show video of the Gennaro, i think young players are motivated to play similar like her. And like we said, uh, defending is very important. Organizing defense is very important for a libero, but setting is also very important. And she's like second set and on the court. So uh, there was no doubt for me to choose for the Gennaro. So actually the libero position requires a really strong mentality as well as playing ability. They really need to be resilient. Um, they have uh, to clear their head after a mistake because they have to organize the team all the time in defense. So they have a crucial role in the team more and more. Okay, well, that's easy enough then. Monica De Gennaro is our libero for the team of the decade from 2010 to 2019. So far, we have uh, libero Monica De Gennaro, we have the setter Maya Onjenovic, and our two middle blockers, Maya Poljak and Milena Rasic. Let's go forward, and this might be a really tough one for you guys uh, to pick, I think. Let's go and do the opposite. Four players in our shortlist. We've got Tiana Boscovich, Paola Igonu, of course, right at the start of her career, but has done so much already at the age of 21. Uh, Yekaterina Gamova, now retired, and Nezlehan Demir Gula, who is also retired, but you know, two amazing players in, in their time in the game and did so much from 20. 10 to 2019. Let's go to Svetlana first and she can pick the first player who she's going to put forward to be the opposite of this team. Well, always most difficult things in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy no, not to order this one. <laughs> I think knowing those two guys, I think that would be topic where we will fight a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Before then, we agree about the decision. Who I would not really like that I sound subjective because I'm Serbian one, but my vote, even to here, it's it's really a war between those names. I mean, even some of them belong to to different part of the. Of the careers, you know, like one Gamova, it's it's through the decade, for sure. 
best opposite in in even decade before but of course she she finished her career a little bit earlier and then we have new new coming people like Boshkovich and Egonu but then you have one Neslihan which is like through this decade everywhere in a national team and in the clubs where she was playing it was almost always main leader of the story that's why I, I think the, the discussion will be big but still I I take my right to vote for Boskovic. I think not for no reason she she got all this individual premise and this is the one of the few examples where I mean most often when when it's about individual awards I I don't like it I will be honest because volleyball it's so team sport and there is so much connection between these positions in a in a team that I I barely agreed with this that only one person can can bring you results through the whole season or or through the one big tournament you, you know you need all of them but somehow for me Boskovic knowing her personally from the Serbia it's it's one player which is complete in in every detail most often it was in the women volleyball that opposites are people who are responsible most often for attack of the whole team uh, when they can block and surf a little bit that's good uh, defense very often we put a little bit eyes on the side to to not judge them too too tough about this sequence of the game and Boskovic it's somebody who for me in this sequence of the game it's it's incredible and serving and blocking it's also serious big part of of her results so for me she is the most complete in this story uh even i was in a serious doubt between gamova and her honestly okay but boskovic is your pick yes okay giovanni your next <laughs> so uh, i think that all of them is pretty unique, you know, so it's, so it's very, very nice, very nice choice, you know, for, for example, if we see Neslian, if we compare Neslian with this player, you know, physically is much, much, much lower, you know, she was jumping less, she, she was not so big, but if you see her score, they were always very, very high, you know, so she was able to do something that for her, her physical quality, much more than, than, than what the other player were used to do. And uh, Egonu, it is the player that I never seen before. So a lot of a lot of time journalists are asking me questions about diagonal. I say the top of Egonu, so where Egonu can can play the, the best of, of, of she can do. Nobody else I ever saw play at this level. Of course, Egonu is still young. That's why she's just, you know, like like you said, she ba barely she will belong to the next decade because. Also, she has to manage the up and down, you know, so, but the up of Egonu, really something that I never saw from, from nobody. Obviously, we talk about a Boscovich attack, but I mean, Boscovich defense is unique. Plus, I think the main quality of, of a diagonal, what makes a diagonal really top, top level, in my opinion, is the back row attack. You know, and, and I listen to this also in the men volleyball, they are speaking pretty much the same, you know, because if you take a lot of the best diagonal in the world and you give them a double plus reception and they are in position two in the first line, they all have pretty much the same, the same statistic. But when you compare, you know, the, the, the diagonal from back row attack, then there is a huge difference, you know, and Boscovich from back row attack, I never saw a player like this and I never saw a player so able to attack the bad set, you know, because everything arrived in the, in the place after defense. You see Libero 20 meters outside the court. They just put one ball in the middle of the court. Arrived Boscovic, of course, for left-handed, she have a little more advantage than the right hand, but she arrived Boscovic and she attacks strong any kind, of, any kind of set, you know, plus very, very disciplined in block, very strong in block, you know. So my choice for this decade is is, is Boscovich for sure. For the next decade, she had to compete with the Gono and probably with Ak 
But for this decade, I think Boscovich is my choice, absolutely, without any doubt. Of course, you know, there's so many amazing opposites. We've only got four in our shortlist. You could go on, you know, the likes of Goncharova or Slutches or Van Hecker of Belgium, you know, so many amazing players. But Giovanni, I have to say, I'm worried for you. You're yeah, worried? Well, okay. if, if <laughs> Nesli Handemir Gula, you know, such an amazing player. If you don't pick her, you might not be allowed on the streets of Istanbul again. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually I have good relation with her. I mean, I think that uh, it, we are doing something pretty, pretty professional, not pretty high level. So I don't, I don't go with, with, uh, with the human feeling. Of course, I know Neslian better than the other. Also, I have the luck to coach Neslian. But, you know, we, we, it, the, the, the comparison is, is very strong for her and, and the other player. You know? So, of course, she, she's an idol in, in Turkey, like, like, like she should be. Okay. So the final person to pick is Gert. Um... I agree a lot because uh, this is a tough decision because those are four amazing players. And um, first we have to go from four to two players. So um, I know that Hamovan, she won two times world championship. She won two times silver on the Olympic games. So extremely exceptional. Um, similar with Neslian, exceptional players, but I never saw two players like Boscovich and Egonu, who are all only 23 years old or 22 years old, which have such an impact on the game. So I think this is almost like we have in football Messi and Ronaldo. It's uh, quite exceptional. And because they are still so young, and they have this impact. I go from four to two, and we have to choose, or I have to choose between Egonu and between Boscovich. So I, I leave Gamova and Neslian with pain in my heart, but we have to make decisions. And then this is a very difficult decision. And I think my opinion was if to, ch to choose between both is like choosing between Messi and Ronaldo almost impossible and I agree with the choice we made uh, I think if we have to make this choice in the next 10 years that it will be Egonu because Egonu has a room for improvement never seen in volleyball she will she will become better and better she she has better and better she has a room for improvement um, I think in four five six years this will be the best player on that position at this moment um, Boscovich she already won two times European Championship she won World Championship she's very complete she is at this moment stronger in back row attack so I think um, this justifies the decision at this moment to choose for Boscovich difficult decision um, but uh, very correct decision so I agree so I think that's conclusive then I think we have picked the opposite in our team, we have Tiana Boscovich to go with the blockers, Poljak and Rasic, the setter is on Jenovic and the Libero de Gennaro of Italy. So we have one position left, two players to pick. We've got to go for the outside hitters. Um, Antonella, Antonella sorry, Del Corre, Carolina Costa Grande, Magujata Glinka, Goes to Kudar, uh, Tatiana Kosleba, Brankicha Mihajevic, and Francesca Piccinini. You know, at the age of 41, still playing volleyball. You know, she's still doing amazing things wherever she, wherever she plays. So, your first pick? My first pick, um, I will separate this list between a real good receiver and defense player. And then we have to choose between Piccinini, uh, Del Corre, Gazde. Uh, very difficult, but point of view mentality and point of view, the, the, the player with the Liverpool heart. I think she's the Steven Gerrard, or she was the Steven Gerrard of her team all the time. And I would choose there for Guzzi. Uh Giovanni, I have to ask you about her because obviously, you know, you spent so many years with her. Sometimes, you know, in sport, you can maybe spend too long at one team, but, you know, she was at Vakit Bank for so many years, 15 years, 2003 to 18, but it doesn't seem to have affected her. 
No, and I think that, that she even she, she even stopped too early. She could have she could have played even more, you know, and and so that what what Gerd says, I'm absolutely I'm absolutely agree. Except when she says that she can be invisible. She she cannot be very invisible. <laughs> she always she always like to 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 put herself in uh, not not to put herself in an important position, but I mean she she's really very strong character. She was an amazing captain because she was for first of all an example, you know, for, for everybody. So she was the player that was pushing more in every training. And she was the player that she never gave up. She was the player that when I give her a goal and and the goal was too easy, she was not not accepting, you know, or or sometimes, you know, we give, okay, you go home after 10 good reception. And one serve was too easy. She was the one to say, okay, I don't count this one. You know, so it's something that very, very unique in the way she was, she was used to push. So we need one garbage player in the team, for sure. You know, so we need one player that specializes in reception, very good in defense and able to play quick. You know, so uh, my, in, for this position, I would be very, very doubting between Piccinini and Gosden. Because, I mean, who, who, who will be able to win more Champions League than Piccinini? I think nobody in this world. So, already she has she have something, some, uh, the, the medal goal of, of, of Piccinini are, are uncountable, I believe, in, in national team and in the club. But also, I totally agree with Gert. We are building a team, so we need also a leader in the team. We are building a team very nice, very strong, but, okay, so I need also a player that, want to shout very strong sometime and want to shaking the others. And so I believe we need one Gozde in the team also. Okay. So you're going to pick Gozde as well. And Svetlana, would you agree with that or would you pick another player? I agree with them that uh, in the game of the defense where we have one Gennaro, uh, the Gennaro, we, we need one person who, who will also be the help for her, for all this Oh, uh, Gerd said garbage work, but I say always this is very hard work. This is the, the work which, that's why I understand what he mean when, when he said invisible. Uh, many don't see. Uh, most often volleyball is today too attractive to, to watch this kind of things, but for us coaches are very important. And uh, if, if we will have serious big and long fight, I will agree with them too, because Absolutely, there it's no chance to say that Gazda doesn't deserve that position. But me personally, I I would have Piccinini if I could make my choice. Okay, uh, so are we all agreed on on Gusta? She she gets one of the positions. Yeah, is that fair? Yeah, I agree for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the same also, it sets up for me. This was a very difficult decision uh, to choose between Piccinini or Gazda. Um, but um, the reason, like I said, was uh, to create a kind of balance in the team point of view mentality, uh, emotionally. And, and, and I was mentioning the Liverpool um, identity, to put the Liverpool identity into, into the team. And I think point of view leadership, uh, there is a small difference, but I pitch in is, is I, this was the most difficult decision uh, to make. Well, I was just going to say, you know, it's, it's such a, a small list, only eight players to pick from, you know, 10 years worth of volleyball. You could have had the likes of Miriam Silla and Elitza Vasileva on there as well. But, you know, there's such a, a strong Italian influence on this. Does Italy just produce great hitters? <laughs> That's a good point. And uh, for sure, Italy produce good receiver, you know, so that, that is something that is, is very important. So maybe... Italy did, don't produce amazing, you know, uh, attacker, like physically strong, but for sure, the, 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 the huge number, the really huge number of young, of club that are devoted to develop the young player in Italy, create players that, 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 that come with good technique, you know, so I, I, I have plenty in my, in my head, a list of, of amazing coaches in Italy that, that, that can teach really the base to the player. And I think that, of course, I mean, if you watch a player like Bozzetti, you know, so if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you don't know Bozzetti, you, you see Bozzetti on the street, you will never think that she can be a, a star in volleyball, you know, but she is, you know, because she has really an incredible technique. And, 
and, they, and Italy have this quality, like, like the, the, the school, the volleyball school of Italy, like Brazil, for example, you know, have, 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 have this quality to, to create this kind of player. That's why we have this, this player probably very good technically. Okay, Giovanni, let's have your second nomination. So let's say that uh, we have pretty good reception, we have pretty good libero. I would like to add some centimeter to my team. And so I would add to Goz the one, one very strong and tall position four. And my heart uh, will give the vote to Glinka. She was for me one incredible blocker, one incredible position four, and, and very successful in the club, very successful in, in Polish national team. Of course, Mihailovic is also very, very, very good. But in this, in this case, because they are two both great attacker of high ball, great attacker of pipe, I will give the vote to Glinka because you know, she, she did really amazing stuff. My, 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 my question mark will be between Mihailovic and Glinka, but I think Serbia already had too many players, so let's give one vote to, to Poland too. Uh, my vote was going to Piccinini and Mihailovic. That's because of this reason. Uh, and also not destroying the, the transition game a lot. But uh, with Gazde, uh, now in this constellation, uh, I think that we, we will not make mistake to say even Mihailovic or even Glinka. I, me personally, of course, and, and including the, the one point of how this team is looking until now, would I think for result would better pass Mihailovic, but still I am very open because I think when somebody deserves enormous big respect uh, as a volleyball player in, in this decade, plus we don't uh, forget that she played also in the past decade, partly, uh, I think this is one kind of, in a positive way, of course, don't understand me wrong, but this is one volleyball monument. So you're saying uh, Piccinini and Mikhailovic is your two picks, yes? Right. It was before then we come in this discussion about, uh, I think we already vote for the Gözde. You vote, right? If I remember correct. Uh, Giovanni said Gözde and Gert also said Gözde. I just need to get Gert's second pick. Sorry, Gert, we left you alone there for a while. No problem. Um, if you have to judge now and you have a normal selection, you will always choose for a strong attacking player. And then you have to make a decision between Mikhailovic or Linka. But I think the team we have made till now is not a normal team. <laughs> um, That's okay. <laughs> So I think you have point of view attacking, you have Boscovic, <laughs> you have Razic, you have Poliak, you have so many options. Um, there is a certain balance, but if you put in Mikhailovic of Klinka, I think this team will crush every opponent. So, and if I have to make a decision between both Glinka or Mikhailovic, I would choose for Glinka because she was all also in my world ever team. Uh, I think a few years ago they asked me. Um, point of view attack, she is just like Mikhailovic, she is exceptional. But in this, I said this is an atypical decision because this is an atypical team. And I think if you bring in this team a second player uh, like Gazde, you have enough capabilities, you have enough qualities in attack. And I think you can create a new dimension of volleyball because I don't want to be the opponent who has to hit against the block of Razic and with the defense line with, for example, Piccinini, Gazde and De Gennaro. So I think it is almost impossible to score. I know point of view blocking, this team is a little bit weaker, but, but if you block on position four and you have De Gennaro behind you, it's not easy to score, I think. So, um, I think I'm doubting now, like in the beginning, I was doubting about the duo piccinini Guzde. I just started with Guzde because of her temperament, her spirit to bring in the team. 
but I think you cannot, um, you have to choose for Piccinini because of her track record, six times uh, Champions League. So in a normal team, I would choose for Glinka, Guzli or Piccinini, and I have chosen for Guzli. Um, with this team, I would choose for Guzli and Piccinini. Okay. Uh, so I think that might, that might be it. Anyone else have anything to say? We have to discuss a lot about position four. <laughs> Go on then, Giovanni. So, so how how do you want to finish this? What 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 are your two final picks, and how can you persuade? Uh, no, I mean, I, I totally agree with I totally agree with Gerd that in a position four of the decade in Europe, we cannot take out Piccinini. So there is even I mean, how much strong is Mihailovic? How much strong is Glinka? But Piccinini won more than anybody else because. Champions League, I think she had six, if I'm not wrong. You are the journalist, but I believe she has six. Seven. Plus, no, seven. Seven. <laughs> Sorry, you see, seven. Plus, and we three, don't forget. Three titles were in this decade. Yes. Plus, we don't forget what she won with national team. You know, because she won a, a one or two European championships for sure. You know, she was, she was in every Olympic. So, if, if you watch the, the career of Piccinini, I believe she has to be inside. Then, you know, we all wanted also, I mean, we, we wanted, we all voted for God for her, for her the way to stay in the court. So, why not a team with, with these two great position for, with great reception, you know, American style volleyball. So, both position four with great reception. Why not? I mean, really, we have a great setter. We have great middle. We have an amazing uh, diagonal, I think we can survive pretty well. I'm okay with this team, for sure. Okay, so just to confirm the two people. First time in my uh, life I convinced you, eh? it's the first time. <laughs> oh, you always convince me. You always convince me, always. So, okay, I, w I, w I would go also at the end with Gosda and Piccini. Okay. And for Gert, can you agree with that? I agree, because of this team is abnormal, atypical, that's why I would choose also. You can create a new dimension of volleyball with this team. Svetlana, back to you. They want to have uh, Gozda and Piccinini as, as their two hitters. Can you, can you let Mihailovic drop out of your team for these two? Just for the record, that they don't forget that I vote for Piccinini and Mihailovic. But yeah, we... that this conversation doesn't take another two hours because if you give them opportunity they will open this bottle about which they are talking i know them pretty well both so i am scared that that we will not finish until tonight at, at least perfect guys we have our team the final team is maya onyenovic is our setter milena rasic and maya polyak as our blockers tiana boscovic is the opposite gusta and piccinini are the two hitters I've got two final questions for you. The first one, I want you all to pick who the captain of this team is. Let's go to Gert, first of all. Like I said, uh, I compare Gerste with uh, Steven Gerrard, so uh, she can be the captain of this team. Giovanni? Uh, I agree, I would, I would think between uh, Gerste and um, Majonjanovic, like captain, but Generally, I don't like to put setter like captain because, uh, I mean, they have so many things to think, okay, that I think they're pretty busy in the court, so I also uh, keep guys like a captain. And is that okay for you, Svetlana? <laughs> I have another opinion, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Most often in my story, when... You know, uh, the things which, which we try to, to speak about volleyball, I am trying also to use it. If I say that the, the, the setter is my right hand in the court, if setter is person who have to bring my philosophy or my head on the court, for me, it's clear that setter have to be also taking this kind of responsibility. I would choose Sobjanovic for the captain, but... I think Let's see guys about both. Say, and then we will know how far we will go in this discussion, of course. 
Okay. So I think I think goes the wins the battle for captain. Just 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 finally, would this team be able to coach itself because of the amazing players that are in it? How long would it take to get this team to play a good level of volleyball? So uh, if they need a coach, I think this team has a lot of experience and the composition of the team is well balanced point of view leadership, also athlete leadership. But I am a non-believer of uh, shared leadership. So I think you can have a captain, but it's not the same. I think every team needs at a certain moment also a coach to make critical decisions. So yes, this team is self-steering. Yes, this team has a, a very good climate within the team, but every team needs a coach. That's a great way to finish. Guys, it's been nearly a couple of hours discussing this team. Thanks very much for your time. Maybe in 2030, we'll meet again and pick the team of the next decade. Thank yeah, you very much. Good appointment. <laughs> See you in 10 years. Away. Okay, we Guys, you picked a great team. Field. You picked a great team. Next Hope time you two take this bottle with you. <laughs> okay, next time in the, the night. Of the Belgium. <laughs> I invite you. <laughs> Guys, thanks very much. See you soon.